everybody, 7 o'clock. So we're going to start. Um, tonight we're going to start with uh, public comment on any items that aren't otherwise heard uh, later for hearings. Is there anybody here tonight that would like to speak? Okay, if I could ask, if you could just come up to the podium, uh, name and address. Um, and, uh, Hi, my name is William Hurley from 43 Eastern Ave. Uh, the first question I have is, uh, I kind of got this from the Gazette, that tonight we were going to be able to give public comment about some of the changes regarding the zoning possible change uh, within the city. Is this the correct format? Is this it is just not right now. You not can't listen to anything in this public, in this section of the uh, hearing that's pertinent to anything we're going to hear later. So that's scheduled for 7.30. Okay, and so just sit tight till 7.30. Sit tight till 7.30 and then you'll get Coffee. Your Absolutely. Black okay, I'll be back. Help yourself. <laughs> Anybody else here for public comment on anything other than uh, what we're going to discuss later? No? Okay, our first uh, item of business tonight is uh, slated for 7 o'clock site plan uh, for a temporary school building and extended curb cut for a drop off at the Montessori School of Northampton, 51 Bates Street, Northampton, map ID 25A 6. And Peter's got How do these new ones differ than the ones we had previously? There are some minor changes regarding concerns the DPW had, and we got that list today. We made all the revisions, eight copies, and those are new. They're, they're minor, and I can go over those uh, shortly. Um, uh, Berkshire Design Group I'm working with at Smith College, so I'll need to recuse myself. Okay. 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 Yep. Once again, my name is Peter Wells. I'm with the Berkshire Design Group. We've been working with the Montessori School with regard to changes and improvements to their campus uh, for the past year. Um, tonight, we would like the uh, planning board to consider amending a permit that was obtained back in the 90s with regard to their uh, addition then. Uh, we have other improvements that, that we, we, we want to make to the campus that will provide uh, a more pedestrian friendly campus uh, and uh, create some additional classroom space. For those of you that don't know the site, it's 1.6 acres. Um, housing approximately an 8,000 square foot school. Uh, with that comes a parking area that houses 42 parking spaces uh, with a, uh, what I would call an inadequate drop-off area for students. Uh, the parking lot itself is also somewhat narrow in terms of um, regular sized parking lots, so backing in and out is an issue and a concern uh, by both teachers and parents. Um, there's a generous playground in the rear of the site. This is the existing condition, uh, Industrial Drive, Bates Avenue. This is their park, existing parking area. Uh, there's two curb cuts. The uh, playground area is in back of the site itself. Uh, it's screened and buffered generously to, to the north and the south and east. Uh, Coca-Cola is to the east. Uh, Montessori asked us to do a number of different things. Uh, the first was to create a, a safer vehicle and pedestrian environment, uh, mainly at the drop-off area and parking. They, they wanted us to look at 
housing a temporary classroom in a location that, that would not drastically affect the site plan, but one that uh, was in, in a location that was close proximity to the school itself, easy access for children to go back and forth, and one that didn't uh, take up too much of the playground area, which is near and dear to the school. There's also some drainage issues uh, throughout the site that we are going to also address. Puddling in the rear where uh, kids and, and uh, teachers exit and some small puddling area around the turnaround. And thirdly, they wanted us to really create a more inviting entrance area. Right now it's overgrown with shrubs and an ornamental tree. It's not easy access direct into the uh, uh, entrance of the school itself, so, so they want us, us to create a more pedestrian friendly and inviting uh, entrance plaza, if you will. This is a renter's site plan that we submitted. There have been a number of small changes that I will go over once I present uh, the plan itself. Um, start, starting with the existing drop-off area, we are removing it, removing one curb cut and a small drop-off area that occurs here. Uh, in its place, we're creating an entrance plaza, which will be concrete, uh, poured in place concrete, benches, a nice planting area for a focal tree, which we've selected a, um, a Tulip tree, Liriodendum tulipifera, uh, quite a nice tree, not planted a lot, but a, a, a strong focal tree. Um, we have moved um, th two existing parking spaces that actually were non-conforming. They were on, they were within uh, eight feet of the property line. Um, ordinance says that you parking areas should be at least eight feet away from the property line. So we pushed those back into the parking lot uh, and created uh, buffer and green space. So one were to come in now and basically park like that. Um, we've moved the accessible parking spaces. Right now they didn't even line up with the ramp that accesses the school. So we moved them so the Accessible spaces are directly at the base of the ramp. Uh, we created a, a better circulation pattern within the uh, existing parking area by basically moving the chain link fence that runs along the playground, in between the playground and parking, roughly 42 inches into the site. And what that allows is cars to, cars to uh, park and have an overhang of 42 inches, thereby the back portion of the car is not sticking out into the aisleway. Um, it's not adding more impervious surface, but it's creating a, a friendlier um, parking area in terms of turning around. It's not a large improvement, but it is an improvement and, and I think will be noted uh, by people that use the parking area often. <clears throat> Um, we, since we're taking away our drop-off area, which really can only house maybe a car and a half because it is so small, um, we've located a drop-off area along um, Bates Avenue. We've met with DPW with regard to uh, attempting to do this for their, their feedback. Uh, they had no issues with it as long as we complied with uh, city standards in terms of construction. So we have a 10 foot wide drop off area off of Bates that can house uh, seven cars versus the one and a half to two cars that exist there now. Um, coupled with that, we have a five foot wide concrete sidewalk uh, with benches for kids that are waiting to be picked up. Uh, and the sidewalk connects directly into the new entrance plaza and with easy access right to the front of the building. Um, adding this pavement, um, right now this site slopes um, 
somewhat so we've added a small catch basin at the end of the loading area that will provide positive drainage and uh, there won't be any puddling or icing. Uh, Ned Huntley from DPW agreed with that in terms of creating a, a, a safer uh, drop-off area. Uh, we are proposing the concrete sidewalk to extend across the entranceway. Uh, that was a request from the planning department uh, rather than, than just go with painted lines. So th this will be a different material, concrete. Um, there, there will be um, rumble strips on each side, ta tactile warning strips. Uh, we've, we've added additional tactile warning strips um, in re response to planning department's uh, concerns and also DPWs. So we have a curb cut here, a curb cut there, a tactile warning strip before the, the, the bike trail even. So it creates a really nice link from people that are biking um, both to the school but also onward. We, we've added a bike rack also located <coughs> in this area. Um, and it, it, it really creates a, a really nice entrance way that is both easier for cars and for people to maneuver. Uh, the temporary classroom, and it will be temporary, um, is a uh, roughly 2,100 square foot uh, classroom that will house two, two classes. Uh, we have a, um, a precast concrete walkway that curves in to a system of steps and accessible ramp, uh, two doors for two different classrooms, two bathrooms inside, two exits in the rear, um, and we located it there to be far enough away from the play area, close enough to the school so it's not a tremendous distance, far enough away from the existing sugar maple so that will be saved. Trees are really important in this space back here because kids are playing there often and rather than that, then have um, people made shade structures, uh, the trees are doing quite well and they're maintained well, they're, they're, they're checked on each year by arborists and they really, uh, they're near and dear to the school. Um, beside that, um, as I mentioned, the precast concrete pavers will be installed on sand, so they will be somewhat uh, pervious. Um, I've shown shots of the tulip tree that will be installed at a four inch caliber, which is about twice the size of, of the standard trees that are installed now. Detectable warning strips. Uh, we'll have signage throughout. The ex existing sign is going to be relocated and moved back slightly. Uh, there, there will be signage for parents in terms of directing them that th this is just a drop-off area, not a parking area. Um, teachers will, will be out here during drop-off uh, times also. And times that it, it is somewhat um, busy in terms of vehicles is 45 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes in the afternoon. We haven't increased the amount of parking. We had the same amount of parking. I know the application that we submitted, there was an increase of one or two. We lost those by moving the parking area into the uh, site itself, com complying with current regulations. Um, yeah, there will be signage in terms of directional signage, but not much. This is a two-way entrance and exit. There'll be signage for the accessible spaces. And I'd like to also go over uh, the memorandum that we received uh, this afternoon and changes that we uh, had time to make and resubmit. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have copies of this or not, but I'll go through them. Um, ge general, the plan should be stamped by a Massachusetts registered professional engineer. I submitted a, a, a plan that was stamped by our, our PE, and we will be submitting stamp plans for building permits uh, later on. Uh, that they asked us to change the proposed drain pipe. Uh, from a HDPE 
which is the plastic to a RCP, which we've done on the plans. Uh, we've included a catch basin detail with a four foot sump. Um, they were concerned about how uh, gentle this slope is along here, and as long as uh, the gutter line flow is maintained, there, there will be proper drainage. So we put a note on a drawing to maintain gutter line flow to a new catch basin to get proper drainage on through here. Uh, the, the paving detail was altered slightly to increase an inch or so of, or well, half an inch of, of uh, bituminous and change the gravel base slightly. Um, snow removal from the um, pull-out area or drop-off area uh, will be maintenance that will be done by the school. Uh, maintenance and, and repair of the curbing along here uh, will also be done by the school. And that was a condition that was agreed upon back when I met with the D DPW uh, months ago. Um, they, they wanted a curb ramp installed at this curb cut, at this on um, uh, walkway, crosswalk. So we installed that on our side um, as an, an addition. Um, tactile dome indicator shall be called out and installed in this area and a new curb cut in this area, which we have included on our plans. And lastly, the DPW recommends that a pedestrian crossing sign meeting the current city standard be installed at the crosswalk across Bates. Um, the sign, the DPW will install the sign. They're asking for us to pay for it. So we have agreed to that. Those were, were the concerns the DPW had. Um, as I mentioned, uh, planning department had some, um, some comments earlier that we've added to these plans. The plans have two revision dates, as you noted, on the plans. One was from re revisions that the planning department asked us to do, and the other was from the DPW today. Uh, the planning board asked us for the concrete uh, crosswalk be installed, and we've done that. Uh, they asked us to move the parking area back, which we comply to. And I don't recall what else was asked for, Wayne, but I know we, we answered yeah, all of it. The sidewalk a little bit to the oh, yes. Adding a little bit of sidewalk to the north in hopes of having a linkage someday to the industrial park. Question, were the, so was the, uh, com were the comments by the DPW, was the plan approved pending all these items being met, or is it rejected, resubmit with all these items being applied or addressed? The, the, only, thing correct okay. the, the only other thing they mentioned is um, they'd like to see final construction draw. Construction begins to work in the right of way. So they're going to separate that to get a trench permit. How, well, how does the person that's driving in from the north uh, drop off? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, would, they would have to either come in here and park and drop off, which most a lot of parents do. What, what interest do they use for that right here? I mean, they, uh, to, to walk in. But uh, this entrance. Okay. There's only one entrance in, in, in the morning that's open, and that's this entrance right here. So right now, many of the parents just come in and park and walk, walk their kids in. So a, a few of them use the small turnaround, but very few. Um, and parents that do park here, they're, they're not allowed to turn left coming out here. So, so they have to use the turnaround and then go around it and use the um, roundabout, well, it's not roundabout, the circular turn on in, in industrial drive. Um, this is the tulip tree on our list of approved street trees, and is the street tree requirement triggered by this project? I think they meet it in terms of one tree every. I think they they meet it for existing trees, existing proposed trees. I don't know the answer in terms of tulip. Do you know? Um, I'll look it up. A tulip tree doesn't withstand tremendous. Uh, 
urban environments. Um, in this area, which is not quite as, as bad, we have a, a, a planting area underneath it that's 10 feet wide, so it's going to have uh, quite a bit of room in order. Um, it does withstand moderate urban environments, uh, and we have used it uh, in parking areas before with uh, pretty good success. But we are willing to listen to concerns and make <coughs> Um, just um, two things, I guess. One is, if you and I don't know how much you participated in the conversation, but it, it, I, I'm having trouble as a parent who used to drop kids off at a school about the idea of the safety of moving the drop-off area from within your boundaries to adjacent to a public street. I mean, I understand there's a pull-off, but you're still putting kids and parents and cars on a public street versus inside a parking lot. So uh, I, I'm not understanding the safety decision there. Well, we feel, one, this is an unsafe condition because there isn't room enough. And when you do drop, drop, drop your, your, your kid off and want to walk with them, you have to leave your car. There's a number of issues with problem with this. Some, some parents actually do turn left, some don't. Uh, it's just too small and inadequate for that we, with, with the amount that the school has grown. Uh, this we felt there wasn't a lot of area to put one either. We couldn't push back in this direction. Uh, we did obtain a order, not in order conditions, but a request for determination negative for the isolated wetland here. Uh, we are not allowed to increase impervious area within the buffer zone, so we're limited with that. Uh, and this was the only area that we felt uh, had room enough in order to uh, at least create an environment that was safer than this. I know it's on a, a busy street, uh, but by pulling off and, and having staff waiting there, um, we felt it, it was the, the only other option. And the, only, and the second thing would be this temporary structure seems to have a fairly permanent sidewalk to it. So how temporary is it? Uh, that's that's a good point. Uh, the sidewalk itself was slated to be poured in place concrete, but we opted to go with pavers that are set set on on sand that can, can be picked up and moved, uh, and will be once this is gone. Uh, it'll be reused for for other uh, sidewalk areas. Um, I'm not here really to speak on the future plans of the school itself, but this is a rented uh, structure uh, for, for for five years. And by that time, the school is already planning on, um, on other uh, future plans for either additional buildings or new sites or what have you. And how many people do they estimate use the, would use the drop-off area every morning and afternoon? Do they have an estimate on just how many vehicles? Uh, we don't know yet because some people will still opt to, 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 to just park. Um, it can house seven cars. Um, I, it's hard to guess how, how many might might be using it. <coughs> yeah. like Frandy's comment. Mm -hmm. um, so Tulip is not on the list of accepted streets. Tulip is not on the list of street trees. Okay, I, I, mean, I don't particularly care, but do you require You do generally require it. I mean, you could accept it if you know Peter commits you to Tulip, but that general, what? you could accept if you want, but you usually require the trees that are in the subdivision standards. Wayne, could I ask a question? Is uh, sweet gum accepted? Carol is the list. I don't know the answer. What's there? Um, black gum. Oh. Liquid to, ambar? Um, no. So what What kind of um, tulip? What's the... Um, Luria dendron, tulip uh, papera? No. <laughs> well, if they meet the tree requirements currently, does that give them a free pass to plant whatever they want, or it has to meet the, the, the within, it has to be from the list? Typically we're required to be from the list. That's, that's usually, I, I can't remember many occasions where we said. Even though this is a, a plaza tree, it's not really a street tree? Well, the other question for any raises, do you have enough trees to meet, uh, in that area, is it every 30 or every 40 feet? 30. So what's the frontage? 272 feet. So theoretically, you'd need nine trees to meet the. Mm. 
Um, frontage, yeah. 292.46 feet. So, in fact, you only need almost 10, but <laughs> 9. So, I mean, it's similar to the conversation we just had with the, the, the hotel on Con Street where we, right. we made them come back and put in more trees because of the street. <laughs> now, we, we have three existing trees along Bates Avenue that are, that are quite large that we're saving. I, I, you know, this is a, um, a pin oak. Um, this is a cattle repair. These are two, two large oaks. Um, we're putting in this tree. There's a bunch at the corner here. Um, I guess I, I didn't see room. Oh. Okay, I thought that was a bush. There's a little one there. Next no, there. this is a tree. Okay. That looks better. It's still only about half. Right. It's like six. I mean, you can probably possibly say they're going to be six. One, two, three, four, five. If you count that. There's a clump on that bottom right. If right. Do you know how many, Peter, at the, the bottom right, that row of trees, how many that is? Uh, the wetlands. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I, I would say there, there's nothing large in there like this, but there's probably seven or eight that are, you know, three or four or five inch caliber. It's just a, it's woods. <laughs> well, I mean, well, we could wave it. If, if they would replace the tulip with a approved tree, we could, I mean, this, we could always waive the street tree requirement if we feel it's the site doesn't require it, so. I guess yeah. I, would, I would urge you to drive by also, and, and there's, there's quite a nice canopy from both sides at this one section. Yeah. I mean, the, they're like 60 feet apart. Right, we, and you know, we do, it, you don't have, they don't have to be every 30 feet. You can right. have a clump of four, right. and 120 feet, and another clump of four. Kind of like, you know, we did it at Taco Bell. I was just going to say that, right? Yeah, they clumped them. So. Yeah, I was never happy about that. <laughs> right, but they, we can't make them put them in the wetlands, and they can't put them in the concrete. So, uh, I mean, if, they, if we wanted to make a condition that they replace the tulip with a tree from the approved list and waive the, the remaining quantity. the quantity. Um, I want to talk some more about the traffic pattern. Sure. Um, so you're you're seem very clear that you're going from one curb cut to two, but what you're getting for that curb cut is 120 feet of pull off. So my 14 foot curb cut turned into, you know, I don't, I don't remember your number, but it's scaled at something like 120 feet. Yes. And uh, it's 10 feet wide. 10 feet wide. Deep, yeah. And so you're right next to the wetlands, and you're saying that that's not a drainage problem that you're adding to because you have drainage problems on the property. No, no, uh, we're not net next to the wetlands. This is 200 feet away from the wetlands. Everything drains in that direction. That direction. The one drainage area we have is out, out of this walkway. This pup puddles up, so it, it becomes mud, and it gets you know, get muddy. So, so we're, we're correcting that and add, adding a uh, walkway. There's a small puddle that's in, in the turnaround area. So cars coming from your side of the property, where you are, uh, will pull off and let the kids out on the school side. Yep. And then you've got transfer truck traffic in within um, at the edge of the next lot. Yeah, that's that that's roughly 120 feet down. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they do come down Bates Avenue. I mean, we oh, yeah. we we have trouble with them doing what we don't want them to do. We we have problems with that now because some parents they you can also park across the street. They they have access to the parking area across the street, um, and many of the teachers park there. But some of the parents also park there and walk across Bates right. in the morning, and, and and we're hoping to alleviate some of that. I'm sorry, I don't know how many students are at the school. Does it? Uh, can you give me some? 115. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, that, uh, that puts the 44 places in scale, so that sounds right. Um, I'm, do, I'm doubtful parents are going to pull into the parking lot and turn around if they're coming from the other direction, uh, but 
that no. you can. And it's better than, I mean, I, I, can, I can see that you have more room in the parking lot than you did. I, I think parents that are coming from this direction won't turn around and drop off here. They're going to come in here and park and, and just drop off. Um, there, there wouldn't be sense to do that because there is quite a bit of parking. It, it's well above what's, what's needed. Um, but it's that 45 minutes in the morning and afternoon that, that it does get, which is what most schools run run into. You yeah. don't want to build a parking area for the, that 45 minutes. I understand. I mean, I just, I think people are in a hurry and they're not going to want to get trapped in that parking lot. So they're going to turn around and right there and try to go back so that they don't get stuck behind other people coming in to let kids off too is my worry. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. <coughs> I'm Celia Pastoriza. I'm on the board of the school. Um, I've been part of this with Peter all along. Um, the school is preschool through sixth grade, but the bulk of the students are in the younger ages. So actually, most of the parents do park and go in and help their kids get settled. That's probably, and this is off the top of my head, that's probably 60 to 70 of the students are in that younger age group where the parents would definitely <coughs> be going. Okay. Um, That's so helpful. it's the older kids that would be dropping off, of which there's right now um, probably 40 altogether. That would be first grade through sixth grade. And even then, a lot of the first grade, second grade parents do like to go in and walk into the schools just as they get older, um, that they're more likely to be in a rush. <laughs> do you have, can, can I ask more questions? Yeah. Do, you, do you have children who travel by bike? I, I don't think there's any bike racks in the story that I saw. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. There's a four loop. Ah, uh, thank you. Right here. Four. Mm -hmm. Four, was it? People right now, our office is on North Street, right? but I forget what time of day it is when I mistakenly drive by the school uh, at drop off or pick up. And, and people are parked on the lawn in front of the school now where the drop off is proposed. You know, yes. two, two wheels on the road, two wheels off. And so I think. What is being proposed it's not ideal but the, the site is not ideal but it's better certainly than what exists now okay and this will eliminate that right right and so it'll be a safer condition yeah. is there i don't know if you looked at i can't think of any of the public elementary schools <coughs> and i think of the one that's closest to me which is leeds there is a a tree lawn in between the drop-off lane and the and the road, and I think that's typical. And this doesn't have that. I mean, again, this is directly on a public street without any barrier. Right. We all. we did discuss that, and there were two um, constraints that we had with with that idea. Um, one is by pulling us in a, another ten feet, we would lose. Uh, this tree for sure and we might lose this tree uh, not that that's the major issue but also pulling it putting an island here to create a buffer runs the problem of since it is su such a small uh, drop-off area only seven cars if you get someone that pulls in and their, their, their child is having a difficult time or, or they can't get them out no one else can drive in there so there's no way to go around um, that car, so it was more of that type of logistics that we were concerned about. And 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 like Mark said, if you go there in the morning, um, people are parked everywhere, unloading now. Not that that's safe and correct, but this yeah. is a much safer. No, you know we don't want to be rewarding bad behavior. Can we just hear staff comments? They've addressed most of them. I mean, there's some specific conditions um, that are reading every letter over now over your But no, con no outstanding concerns from planning? No. Okay. This is one of the, uh, I think Frandy mentioned it. You know, what makes it a temporary shelter? I mean, it, it's got plumbing, it's got power. It's going to be there for five years. Are there any special you, considerations? You're proving it. There's no reason they couldn't keep it forever. I think it's temporary in the sense that it's a modular classroom and they plan to replace it. But we're not suggesting any conditions. So, Right. I mean, essentially, we should consider it to be a structure. Right. Yeah. If this was a permanent structure, would, would the discussion right now be any different as far as setbacks or anything 
no. than right. because it's got the temporary tag. To it. No. Right. Not special allowance. Really, yeah. our, our main focus for everything you've said and DPW have said is really right yeah. Yeah. what's back there to some extent. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter. Any other questions by the board? No? Open up to public comment. Yeah. Is anyone here from the public who would like to speak on this issue? No? Any close public comment? Or Do discuss? We have any more questions? You want to just before we do? You want to just or, or, do we we add do we add the condition about change the tree and well, we'll discuss like, it? That. We haven't really right. So yeah. while we're still open, we should just decide yeah. what we're going to do with that. So I mean, we, so we've got nine or ten issues by the DPW, all of which have been met. So um, I don't know if that would be a condition because the comments from the DPW were just received this afternoon, and then you had a quick turnaround and, and addressed them. Mm -hmm. But the DPW has hasn't seen this. No. Most recent. Okay. So, so let me go. But those are just comments by the DP or recommendations to begin with. By right. DPW. So, okay. so most of those have been changed. I'm going to go through the four yeah. that, that I have yeah. you talked about. So first three are from DPW directly. Just did they get final construction drawings prior to any construction, primarily with what's going to happen in the right of way, um, that uh, the owner will provide uh, pedestrian crossing signs to DPW that meet city standards and, and manual uniform traffic control device standards, and they install them just for the crosswalk. Um, that the owner will be always be responsible for snow removal within this pull-off area and for maintaining the curb within the pull-off area. Um, and that the, this is from you guys, that the tulip tree replaced by one of the trees within the subdivision as accepted, subdivision regulations as accepted street. Tree. And that would give us a total of one, two, three, four, well, the problem is how many are there within that wetlands cluster? Right, plus right. whatever you're going to live, right? So, I'm, I'm fine with the tree condition, but I would just weigh in as an opinion. They, they picked a specimen tree. They, they've thought about whether it's going to do well in that location. They've got, they, they're trying to influence the, you know, front entry of their building. So I'm, I'm not, I mean, I don't have a good reason not to, you know, to oppose the tree list that we've developed, but I just think this is, to me, almost a specimen tree rather than one of the border trees we're usually talking about. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't feel about this one the way I do about a juniper or something. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. It's just an opinion. And obviously, our trees, we're particularly interested in our trees on streets which we're going to own. That's not true. Right. right. This is a different conversation than we had with the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Where there's a pedestrian walkway all the way down the street. This is at the border of the industrial park. So. Yeah. Does does the absence of enough street trees bother anybody? No, I don't think it, it reads that way when you when you drive by. They're big trees. Yeah, it's they're they're mature and they're it's you don't it doesn't read as a lot of empty space. It's not a new development. Right. So, right. Yeah. And I don't think the surrounding um, surrounding properties necessarily have. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I would have no objection to having them put up their tulip. What is it? <laughs> Come with me, Randy. Maria Dandern Tulipifera. Pardon? Maria Dandern Tulipifera. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, if you can spell it, then you would can do the exhibition. I don't, I, I have to say I don't like the pull-off area being on the street like that. But um, I'm not sure what else they could do. Have you seen, I mean, have you driven by a drop-off? It's utterly, it's... it's crazy crazy and it's really unsightly there's just cars every like parked every which way like well, would, it, <coughs> would it solve that problem or is there going to be are there going to be cars backed up on big street all That's the way to, to uh, bridge street I, you know i mean i i think it would all that fossil fuel huh? <laughs> i think i i said I, i've driven by and i see cars up with two wheels on the lawn two wheels off i see all four uh, wheels up and park scattered any which way they can get. I think with with the, the pull off, it will be you know predetermined. This is where you're going to go, and you're not going to go anywhere else. And it'll be it'll be sustained chaos instead of just it's it's crazy when you drive by in the morning. I mean they're everywhere. But when you have say someone parks in the middle and leaves their car there for whatever reason, an extended period of time, I mean. You're still, I mean, it's going to be like pulling out of parallel parking or something. 
Well, people do that every day. I mean, it, you know, are you really going to have those? I mean, it, it, again, it's it's going to be like a parking lane on a street to me. And I, <laughs> it, it is. But I yeah. think if uh, I forget the name of the daycare school across from the Y on Prospect, mm -hmm. Meadowlark. Meadowlark. Mm -hmm. It's the same issue. There's no pull off. There's nothing. Y parking by itself is is horrible. Right. And a lot of people park across the street. And then in Meadowlark, 45 minutes, you know, early and late afternoon. Same thing, and so there's there's no pull off. It's it's dangerous. Can there be? I mean, I'm not sure if we can. We can't map and put a sign there that says no parking. It's just what do they have at airport? Drop off it's only. Drop yeah. off only. Right. We can give signs sign down here. Pick up and drop off only. Uh, there will be teachers there, as I mentioned, bringing kids in. Parents are not supposed to stop and get out and walk their kids in in this area. Uh, so we're trying to enforce that. I thought it was said that the majority of kids are of an age where their parents will want to park and drop them in. Yeah, and, and that's for this area. Right, so drop off will only be for the older kids. For the younger kids, they won't park there, they'll go into the parking lot. Peter, do we have on the plans that thing about uh, the, those signs? Yeah, let's see them on our plans. About the signs? The, uh, no, no, no. drop-off signs. We don't have, oh, oh. Uh, no drop -off signs. <coughs> uh, we don't have that yet, but you can make that a condition. Okay. We're obviously going to try and um, wayfind as, as best possible to, well, there aren't any questions. I mean, I think it's, um, it's going to help get people drop off their kids safely. It's not going to solve the problem of people parking everywhere. And right. No. It's still going to be a mess. Well, it should improve it. Right. Yeah. Won't solve it, but I think it'll make it better. So we're going to have the condition about the side. Okay, right. now would you Signage like me to no move parking. to close the yes. public hearing? I move to close the Signage public hearing. No Second. In for pick up and drop. Second, Jen, all in favor? <coughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five potential conditions. Oh, so all the recommendations from the DPW have been met. Uh, staff recommends final drawings before. Uh, what was the condition before? The final construction drawing before, final. before any work on the road right away. Before any work, okay. Uh, pedestrian crossing signs, snow removal within the turn, within the cutout. The tulip tree, we're going to waive that condition. And drop off signage. And just the snow removal, snow removal, and also curb maintenance. Right. Is there a spot? Further discussion? No. With conditions. Do we close the hearing? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Randy and then Jen second. Second. Where's the copier? No. I yeah, second, second hand. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six to one. John opposed. Okay. Thank you, Peter. You are up. Next up, uh, slated for 7:30 tonight, is a major site plan for a 4,780 square foot medical office addition. 
at 70 Main Street in Florence, map ID 23A-70. Good evening. My name is Matt McDonough, and I'm um, manager of Middle Hampshire Development Group, which owns the property at 70 Main Street, as well as a couple of abutting properties. Uh, and our tenant is the Valley Medical Group. The building uh, is 13,000, the existing building is 13,373 square feet. Um, it was built in 1981, and the, this addition is really just to uh, expand the uses that have been crammed, for want of a better word, into this building. And also, we're using the opportunity to comply with the new building codes and the changing uh, uh, method of delivery of services by our tenant to upgrade the building. The upgrades will include uh, uh, new electrical service, uh, larger gas service, and uh, uh, fire fire protection sprinkler system, as well as uh, uh, pull boxes, strobes, and you know, hardwire smoke alarms. Um, the addition is uh, contemplated at 4,780 4, feet, which will bring a total uh, New, uh, total building of 18,153 feet. This proposal uh, does not contemplate, because we added parking about six years ago, this proposal does not contemplate uh, a number of the typical uh, accoutrement to a development of this size, in that we are not changing the curb cut, we're not changing uh, the parking, we're not changing the landscaping. We're really taking a, uh, a, a small <coughs> Uh, existing parking area and a small lawn that had been uh, had a trailer on it for about six years and um, and that's where the addition is going um, the tripod, so I apologize, but this is the existing building and the addition is really just extends back here via sympathetic uh, uh, construction materials brick and, and precast concrete panels and all very much look like uh, the existing building. I can pass this round. Um, the, uh, uh, here is the, the site from Main Street. Here's the existing building. Here's the concrete addition. This is parking that we, we constructed about six years ago. This is staff parking, which really dramatically frees up uh, the parking for uh, clients. Uh, we also own these two parcels, but we're not using those parcels as part of this presentation because they're not needed at this time. The packets that we've given to the uh, department and to this uh, board uh, speaks to the parking that we have existing uh, 103 spaces and requires only 92. So we're losing, uh, that does not include the ones, we're, we're losing about six spaces back here. Um, this is the uh, existing now. There's a small parking area here, and that trailer is there. That goes away. The parking area goes away, and the addition fits right here. Um, we had a photometric plan that uh, planning staff had uh, noticed, thankfully, we did that uh, the photometric plan did not address uh, three wall packs and really dealt with two of them. Uh, this revised plan, which I have multiple copies of for the board, um, uh, has been amended. So it shows that there's, the light doesn't bleed off on real estate. Just as a note, and for those of you who've been out there, this is the fire station. And, and while we have lighting in this lot and existing lighting here, uh, and our lighting doesn't uh, go on to our neighbor's property, there's an enormous amount of flight shit from, I mean, it's, it's great. We've never been so, so what we, you know, we, ours is going to zero at the border. There's a lot of income, uh, <laughs> which is okay. Uh, again, they're, uh, they're great neighbors and we've got a bad problem in store to you. Um, this is the, uh, the actual addition. Here's uh, Main Street. Here's the entrance. None of that changes. Driving patterns in this site don't change whatsoever. Because uh, back here, when it's <coughs> parking, and that remains so, and the addition, the side gut setbacks are the same as exist, and uh, none of that changes. So, well, this is a major project by the definition 
it is. Uh, it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't demand a lot of the. Uh, it, you know, a lot of the issues that are major project elsewhere in the town where the address doesn't. Uh, it's not indicated because we we did the parking six years ago uh, to handle that. This is my third project before this committee in the last 15 years, and I think the other two have been really good, and I think that uh, we expect this one to go as smooth as the other two. The first being the redevelopment of uh, 1999. We re redeveloped the building laundry property into medical office space at 118 Conn Street, and um, that, that project went well, and that was a lot more complicated than this uh, is anticipated to be. And also, I am a principal in a, in a company that uh, is redeveloping the Pro Rush complex at 296 Nanotech Street. And that also has gone really well. And I think uh, the departments with, with which we interact, mostly building department, are very pleased with that development. So I think I have a pretty good track record with this. And Crocker Building Company, who will be our builder uh, on this project, um, has done a lot of medical space for us. And we have a great level of confidence in them. They've done a fair amount of work in Northampton as well. Questions? Yes, Devin. Review the parking numbers for me. I got, uh, you have 92. And you have 103. Correct. That's what you have, and it goes down to 92. No, no. Required is 92. Losing the six that we're going to lose is still 103. I didn't count those. That helps my math. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with the project. Parking is my only concern about this. And it's not really for this particular building, but it is because I have sat through meeting after meeting after meeting about Middle Street and the parking problems created by another medical building in town. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware of that. And, I, and, you know, when we had the opportunity uh, seven years ago to purchase the 77 and 81 Maple Street, uh, we held our nose and we did it because it's very expensive but it was really a problem we were renting space from uh miss warren steiner and you know uh but it, it was clear that uh long term we had to solve that problem we were very thankful we did and i think it's just the proof of the pudding tonight okay so this is a major site plan because of the parking requirements but they already meet the parking requirements because right. of what they did several years ago so i am not sure i understood your question and your answer, have the parking issues on Middle Street been addressed or they're, they're still ongoing? It, it's not really this no, building's that. problem, oh, but it, I'm sensitized to the, the, the effect of uh, what you don't want is you don't want a, a facility to take it to encourage its staff to park in the neighborhood because they don't have enough parking and then to free up your parking capability for your clients. And I use this building. I, that, that's not been my experience of it. But I just, that's my only, that's the only thing I've learned in, is about parking. That, right. you know, you just, uh, it's, it's certainly been an issue in Florence. This, you know, you can see Middle Street on the, on the plans here. But it's not, and, and that's the street that has been most upset about the on-street parking. But I don't believe it's come from this building because there's usually space in this building mm -hmm. right. yes. and I think and I think it goes to what you said I didn't know the history of it but I think it's yes. from biting the bullet some time ago yes and and the, and the lot on uh, at 77 uh, Maple Street is staff parking it's a like hard key access and uh, that really has freed up with uh, all the pressure is really gone mm -hmm. and any time of day and night I've been really following it more closely as this project evolved there's always uh, ample parking. So much so that the Florence Pizza gets some freebies at lunch. From <laughs> <laughs> people that hit the wrong driveway. But uh, so uh, we're, we're comfortable with that aspect of it. Okay. And we're excited about the project because of, it, you know, it's gonna, the building is uh, tired. And it needs a, needs a substantial shot in the arm, which this project will uh, accomplish. Mm -hmm. Steven. Um, so similar to the conversation we just had with Montessori, 192 feet of frontage, and I don't see any trees. Uh, 
I'm not sure what the plantings are. They show one, two, three, four small shrubs. Well, let me explain the plantings. We purchased the building in 2001, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but the front of the building had this hill from the face of the building right to the side where it had all this ivy and it was really junky and people that had full of coffee cups and whatever. And we removed it because it was buggy and it was, it was a water problem in the building. And we found out that it was, it was loaded, it was this tall. It was loaded with construction debris from 1981. So we took out 300 yards of stuff and planted grass and has planting. So the whole front of the building since uh, uh, 2002 has had a, a nice belt of planters along uh, Main Street. And then there's a, 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 a very 20 foot belt of grass between the sidewalk and, and inwards. And there's trees all around, and uh, there's a. I think there's the on this plan that you have. There's a calculation on, on the green space as well. I believe it's uh, in excess of. It's not so much a, a green space issue or a plantings issue, or the fact that it is much improved than it was early 2000s, but because of the site plan, it triggers the necessity or couldn't trigger the necessity of a certain quantity of trees along the street so right so in general business there's um if a building is at the set at the property line there's no street tree requirement but otherwise there would be one for 30 and i i um didn't catch that so if you at the at this point it would be appropriate you know if it makes sense to enhance the tree count there, um, there are four now along the street okay uh, two and on the driveway. Like my, 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 uh, trees or shrubs? No, those are trees. They're in the tree belt. So we don't have that, John. Uh, yeah, gonna... the this, is a, this is a drawing. Yeah, there are some things. This the second page. But this does not identify what they are. Right. So it looks like they've been required to do six. Hundred two. So it's more than that. Plus sixty four. So. Uh, you just you're gonna add more trees. <laughs> I know. I understand. <laughs> We're happy to do that. I mean, those trees are are actually the town is trees. They're in the tree belt. Are they not? Uh, they could be, but it that um, either them as trees. They could be in. The requirement is along the street. I see. So it could be in the belt, or it could be on your property. Two hundred fifty seven feet. I said seven, but there's four on the cur on the street line. There's two in at, at like a, equal to the face of the building. And then there's a tree uh, in the grassy area to, towards the entrance. One of the, yeah. the, the one at the entrance and in the parking lot wouldn't count. But so by that total frontage, it would be eight trees. Would okay. be required. Mm -hmm. Got four. Right, so you need, we, we you need four the trees. More. I'm going to use tree belt on the street line where the others are, typically. You could, or you could cluster them as well, or stagger them. Yeah, they got not putting trees near our roofs. So. Yeah. 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 Sight lines coming in and out of the property. There are right. advantages to not space them all out. Right, right, right. right. Which isn't required; it's just the quantity. Right. right. Yeah. Like we could probably shade the trees, no pun intended, over towards the, uh, <laughs> the west side so that wouldn't impede the sight lines. Mm -hmm. and over, over this way a little bit. This will give you a good shot then. Yeah, because there's no, it's not as if they're going to block an entrance because the entrance is in the parking lot. So. Yeah, the, the entrance road kind of divides the building and the right. Mm -hmm. right. So. Would make the condition four street trees from the approved planting plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Go down swing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 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 that 
was one uh, condition that was discussed. The other was the revised life plan that you have, which addresses the third yes. wall pack. I have, uh, I have lots of copies. Four trees. Just planted four more of those. I know it. <laughs> 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 well, it's not your yeah, How do you get from the park? <laughs> I encourage you to think it's a lot like It's like point twos and a couple of point right. two point ones. Is that third? So that's a, that wall pack is for safety. Where's the fire station? Third one that was yeah. That one. Oh, here is the fire station is here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, here it is. So is that on a? a photo? This was not the fire department. This would be a dark corner. Right. It's pretty well is that on a photo cell or a time clock? Or? Uh, they're usually on the clock. Oh, so they're not, they won't be on 24 hours a day. I mean, we'll no, and as I said, if you go over here, it's, it's pretty bright. Right. <laughs> Just generally. Right. Uh, but, it's but for the sake of argument, if the, if the fire station didn't exist, those yeah. three wall parts are on, on a timer, so at yes. 10 o'clock at night or whatever the time is, they all go off. Correct. Okay. Their hours generally. Any other comments? Open up for public. Sure. Yes, uh, if you, so I'll set with you guys. If you want to, uh, ma'am, step up and just give your name and address. Fisher and I'm. Should repeat that? The Sorry. Yes, Fisher. Gertrude Fisher is my legal name. Mm -hmm. And I'm the butter to 53 Middle Street, which uh, abuts the um, Valley Medical, and then across the projected parking lot, where it was all marked off where um, John's linoleum, and then the <coughs> little building next to it was torn down. So our concern is exactly what the setbacks are going to be from the property line because there's nothing there now but barren vacant lot. I think I called to, I don't know if this concerns this meeting or not. We're not proposing anything on that site. So no. you're not going to do anything? Well, that's this, why I want to That's a separate meeting. Yeah, that's why I wanted to this, know. This proposed addition for tonight's hearing doesn't affect those parcels that you're talking about. Okay. So, uh, but could you tell me, though, how, mu uh, how many feet are in concern? Because I talked to Mr. McDonough before about, you know, plantings and things in the future. It's a, it's a 50 foot, foot addition? 50 foot addition? Is it? Well, we're going 50 foot that way, yes. Yeah. Right. So... And it abuts exactly to um, no. I think my yard. There's an issue confusion here. The parcel that that she is describing is this parcel. Mm -hmm. We're not proposing anything on this parcel. Mm -hmm. Right. That's there's so there's nothing happening. There's nothing right. Happening there. Right. So it's just so going to stay vacant. 
for now. For, now. for right to, again, right. tonight's if, hearing. If you're there, we have to go back to the board. Right. Oh, I see. Tonight's hearing is just on the addition in the back, which doesn't affect that parcel in any way, and they couldn't do that without again. Without but just for my information, though, I would like to know um, <coughs> if the parking lot is adjoining um, residential property. How many feet is there for a setback? Is there a special guideline? I'm not sure I follow the the existing parking lot is changing physically. The the parameters of the parking lot. Are right. I think the question is, what is the zoning guideline for in general? In general. Sixty three and a half. If 63 and a half Maple Street were to be redeveloped, and that's not the topic of tonight's conversation. I understand. That's the question. There's a, there typically between, uh, or the zoning requires that between um, <coughs> a commercial <coughs> district and a residential district that there's a 30 foot right. uh, planted buffer that the planning board can reduce to 20. Um, so in, in this case, the, um, the or, a, and if there's, um, they can do that if there's a fence there. There's currently a fence and landscaping as the buffer between this parcel under <coughs> which is under view in front of you now and the abutting parcel. Um, but the same buffer requirements would apply to um, a, any use on that other parcel that's not part of this permit review tonight. Okay, that that was my question. Because it's just barren. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak on this issue? <clears throat> yes. My name is Josh Rickman. I'm here for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on behalf of Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Just making sure we're using the same entrance and exit for our paratransit vehicles. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, four or five years ago, we actually gave permission to Pioneer Valley uh, Transit Authority to put their bus shelter on our property. Nothing that. Nothing's going to change like that. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Second, Jen. All in favor? Any discussion? So we. Yeah, I just want to read the. We got two. Well. One condition we have are for the four additional trees per the uh, planting plan or the approved uh, shade tree plan. Second, were, were the concerns on the, the lighting layout. So we're, we're, we're going off the revised one that was issued tonight, which reflects it's not zero at the perimeter, but if they're all on a schedule, if they're all on a timer, uh, and they're off by nine, and I don't know if it's, it's an issue. Well, you might want to put that as a condition. That the lights mm -hmm. go up, be turned off at nine. Yeah, sure. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to that effect? You want to, you want the motion to approve the permit with those conditions? Yeah. Your last for us. I move that we approve the major site plan, 4,780 square foot medical office edition at 70 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-70 <coughs> with the listed condition. Okay, and the conditions were, again? The conditions were the addi four additional trees and the wall packs, the three lights on the exterior of the building are off at uh, nine o'clock. So I need a second. Second. Second, Jen, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're going to put a fence up. Oh, good stuff. Okay, next up, scheduled for 7.30, a uh, little late, a continuation of a public hearing on proposed zoning changes to URA, B, and C districts and the modifications to section 6.8. Do you want to walk us through? Um, yeah, so the, the public hearing, um, 
May 13th, there was, um, you know, a lot of discussion about the bulk of the zoning package, and the reason why it was continued was uh, because at a previous um, city council subcommittee meeting, um, economic development and land use, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels had proposed um, a modification to urban residential C to um, include a special permit provision for uh, any new construction of, of a project that included seven or more either multifamily units or townhouse units. And because that was a uh, standard that is not currently in the regulations for urban residential C and certainly wasn't advertised. We needed to advertise that as because it's a more stringent standard than the uh, um, than the existing situation. And um, uh, so that's the, why the that public hearing was continued and the the um, ordinance committee continued theirs as well. But their meeting is June tenth. So. Um, Instead of closing on a certain portion of the package, um, it made sense to sort of carry everything forward and let this one proposed amendment that had to be advertised catch up mm -hmm. in essence so that you all could review the whole thing again and make your final recommendation to city council. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion about whether, um, you know, there were actually at that um, meeting as well, there were sort of a couple pockets of um, residents from mostly two neighborhoods that were raising concerns about um, about the zoning and whether or not um, their neighborhood should be taken out of urban residential C. And so this amendment is sort of um, almost a compromise to say, okay, there was this concern that uh, when multiple units are um, proposed, that's when p neighborhoods get concerned about wholesale changes within the, uh, the block or the neighborhood. Um, so this is a mechanism to um, help address that. And so it certainly would be staff recommendation that it makes sense as opposed to looking at remapping, you know, different areas of urban residential C in particular. W staff looked at the recommendation from um, count the counselor and um, thought that it would be prudent to also add that special permit criteria for urban residential B as well because um, there, townhouse units are allowed in B, so it sort of makes sense to mirror that in B. So in front of you is, and what was advertised, is a minor modification to both um, B and C to, um, to include a special permit um, provision for that. So that's sort of where we are. Um, there were a couple of, um, we also got one of the Zoning Revisions Committee members had um, quickly um, reviewed this and made a couple of um, comments that I think are valid to, to modify just for clarification, adding, um, clarifying that the lot dimension standards are the minimum dimension standards required as sort of at the header, and then also clarifying um, this issue of um, how we allow um, setbacks for garages that are closer to side property boundaries than um, residential structures, which is the current standard now. We allow, if you, can, you can bring your garage, if it's attached to the house, that component of the house can be closer to a side property line than 15 feet if it's only used for garage, storage, or workshop space. And um, it wasn't, I guess, um, um, it wasn't, it, he felt that it wasn't um, clear that, that parking cars and storage are treated equally. So I think adding just the word um, that um, that provision for a 10-foot side setback um, is, is for the purposes of storing vehicles and other items or workshop space. Or if we also said it didn't have to be used as living space. I mean, isn't that the real thing? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's true. So that's another way to look at it. Right. Yep. It can be four feet from the property line at the side and the rear. It still needs to be um, uh, 15 <coughs> feet from the front lot line. And 
with regard to what Frandy just said, can it be resident? Could somebody no. live in it? No. And that's the distinction that's currently on the books. You can't, so you're allowed, if it's just, you know, a storage or a workshop space and it's detached, it can be much closer to the property boundary. For living space, it's always been the standard that it meets the same setback as a principal structure. However, there was this, um, at, at some point, added this modification that maybe you could get a little bit closer if you sign an affidavit that will only be used for storage and you'll never convert it to living space. Okay. Question, um, what, who came up with the number seven and why? Count the counselor came up with seven, One and um, mm -hmm. he's not here to present his proposal tonight. No, I think in fact it, um, at the public hearing he indicated that um, you know he was hearing um, hearing a lower number from some constituents, but at the same time understanding that there are many many five unit. Um, and six unit um, properties in the urban residential C district. And so um, it, he felt like it needed to be more than five or six and um, that he was comfortable with seven as sort of, um, I don't know. It was a balance. He just said it was a balance. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Well, my concern about the Freeman, the Owen Freeman Daniels, about his amendment is that it, it seems to be sold as a way to block the further development, but a special permit can easily be granted, and it might put us in the political arena. We would approach it from a planning standpoint, and the neighbors might think that this is some way to block um, larger quantities of townhouses, and I don't think it's going to work for that. Hopefully they're listening. Pardon? The, it, Hopefully they're listening. It, makes, it rate does raise the bar. That's a, right. It's, a, right. it's a higher bar to clear than the special yeah. site plan. But there's hardly any guarantee that the planning board would not approve it. That's true. No. But we also have a lot more discretion when we do approve it. Yeah. So. He actually argued he was pretty comfortable with the way it was. He was simply trying to make the constituents right. more comfortable. Right. And but I think you're right. It's not only is it, um, it's, it's, it has a couple of, um, I, I think, more protective measures than, mm -hmm. than it otherwise would without the special permit and that is when people see special permit sometimes they're afraid to even apply because they know that those can be appealed and that it would in the very least delay a project um, and so it might turn people away that we might not even see come forward because they see well seven is um, special permit and the other thing of course is it does take a two-thirds vote of the board um, so it's not just a simple majority so um, that's part of the the concern certainly from an applicant standpoint that they need to um, get more votes that's right I also forgot about the appeal <coughs> the appeal process is, is, is much easier to appeal a special permit than a site plan no other no it's much easier if you can appeal a, a special permit site plan Right. They're, right. They're almost impossible to appeal. Technical. To turn over. Right. Yeah. To reverse. Right. Yeah. We'll plan. The appeal thing won't change, but there is a zoning reform law before the legislature, as there has been every year for decades. So I don't really know if it's going to change, but this one seems like a true change this year than before. That would change the vote. Special permit? Depending on the city council, the city council has to accept that. But yes. Interesting. I, I guess maybe going back to Brandy's comment and. Seems that we've worked, and especially all of you more than I have. But I mean, we've all worked very hard to get this package. And it seems like it's taking it and trying to address the needs of a very specific group of constituents versus, you know, the idea of trying to do this across an entire city. And, and I guess I just worry: are you are we creating a, a point or a, a fissure or whatever? I mean, that this could. Begin, you know, be the beginning of finding wedges between and start, you know, are we defeating our own purpose in some sense by, before we've even Im implemented it, we've said, oh, and then here's a, you know, we're, we're going to alter it, you know, in this way that creates a special class for a special place right. because of constituent, const I mean, so I, I don't know, I just, like you said, I mean, do we want people not to apply because they're scared off by the, I mean, no, I'd rather have them apply and then tell them, well, I'm sorry, you don't meet, or whatever, but I mean, I, I, I don't know, I worry about 
discouraging people, but, and we never we never know what we've missed because right. they never come to us. Right. Uh, I mean, I guess there is that there is that piece. I think the other piece is um, the nature of um, trying to make changes to zoning is it gets massaged as it as it works its way through, and this is these represent um, significant changes um, beyond what has been changed for many years and in you know the spirit of sustainable Northampton but um, the other piece is we can try we try many times to do things incrementally so if this is the first step and we can work on it live with it and see what happens and what percolates and what doesn't and you know maybe come back and address it later but from our pers from staff perspective, I think um, trying to work out those compromises as it as it goes through makes sense, um, so that we can get to a place where our zoning really matches better what's in the neighborhood, um, as opposed to having it all fail just on a, you know. You don't um, want to lose it for just a sm relatively right. small piece. Yeah. Right. It seems like in in two years we've had. It's been um, there hasn't been a lot of pushback there's been a lot of um, education on, on just what it is that's being proposed and why it's being proposed and what it represents really truly on the street and what it means to a particular neighborhood and once that understanding uh, came across again there wasn't a lot of pushback and not that this was pushback but this is one issue that came up and I think in a good faith effort to get this whole thing moving forward that I don't think it's unreasonable to address it well, and also there was, you know, five years ago when we were having public meetings about this, at the beginning of our meeting, we explained the process and that the ZRC and the planning board don't enact zoning. We recommend zoning, right. but eventually all zoning changes are a political decision right. and it's the city council's responsibility for enacting them. So for a city councilor, this is part of their process that they're going to go through that hopefully they will make it so they can sign off on something that has really taken five years just to get to where we are today. Want to hear from our public? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on up, Bill. Just name it a lot of water. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I suppose this is kind of like the 11th inning, but uh, a couple of people in the neighborhood. I live at 43 Eastern Ave in Northampton. Um, I just retired as the deputy fire chief, but a few people in the neighborhood of Eastern Avenue have asked me to just talk real quickly about um, uh, how I feel about the um, uh, the, uh, the building on compromised infrastructure. And what I'll do for a few minutes is, or a minute, I'll back up a little bit. Fall of 2009, I was tasked with doing a fire threat assessment of Ward 3, given its history by Chief Duggan. Uh, in addition to the water, assessing water supply, high hazard occupancy, occupancy and special hazards, and looking at the threat of the Ward 3, um, one of the additional threats I was told to look at was uh, the stormwater infrastructure and how it, if it could not handle uh, heavy water during thunderstorms, impeding egress and access. Uh, recently, this has come uh, more apparent with multiple sinkholes that have started to form um, in some of the infrastructure down in Ward 3 in the drainage systems. Um, I met with the DPW, I did talk to them, they said they were going to do their best to get down into certain areas to repair the, the sinkholes, but uh, they said that they can't repair the lines themselves because it's just too expensive and they just don't have the funding. So um, again, I just retired, so Chief Duggan doesn't know I'm here. He'd shoot me <laughs> if, he, if I didn't come before I tell him. I know this is probably kind of 11th inning, but you know, I figured in good faith I better come down and just say, you know, as the Deputy Fire Chief, the issue that we had was um, the water system, the drainage system just couldn't handle it. And we were in situations where we couldn't get the fire trucks the ambulances especially because the fire trucks can get take a little bit more water they couldn't get this down a lot of the side streets and i'm not sure how taking out of the footprint um you know uh, makes that so that does not make it worse especially if you have compromised infrastructure where you have sinkholes forming and we have the pictures of them now and the whole bit and they say they're going to try and get to them but 
can only do so much with the funding that they have. So the to-do list for the DPW is a, is a long one. It's very long. Mm -hmm. I understand it. Uh, certain areas where we are in Ward 3, it, it's not right on the main road, but, um, you know, we have the documentation to show that the vehicles couldn't get down certain roads during high water. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've had neighbors say that if they are able to build, they'll take out of the footprint and add to the water system. I've talked to Doug McDonald about it. You can only do so much. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's... Could, could you refresh my memory where Eastern Avenue is? Eastern Ave is uh, where all the fires were in 2009. Uh, <laughs> Uh, William Lunch Street, what Street? Pomeroy Terrace. Okay. It's off of College Street. Church, mm -hmm. right down the end. Okay. It's um, it's just an old part of the city with old pipes. Oh yeah. And um, it's just become water like this isn't a problem. It's when you get a thunderstorm. You get all that water at once into the city, and um, it just can't handle it, and uh, the trucks can't get through. And then what do you do? We've had to do emergency egresses of numerous properties down there. Tell the people to get their vehicles out. Either that or they're going to be submerged. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. If, if I walked the avenue, would I be able to see the sinkholes? Oh, of course. Okay. Well, you'd walk down Eastern Avenue, take a right down by the dike. Yep. You'd have to actually... <laughs> They're kind of like grown in. The city said that they're going to try and get to fixing them. They found one last year uh, because they run the cameras through, uh -huh. and uh, they found it. And when they were down there, then they started finding more sinkholes. So, but they they just don't have the funding to replace the piping. So they're running the pigs through the pipes, and then they find that the right they find broken, it. and that's what's causing the sinkhole. Uh, say, say that again. The pipe is broken, and that's what's causing the sinkhole. Right. Right. You can actually stick the shovel down yep. through the ground. And then when they get down there, then they go another 10 feet and they yep. find another one. And what they said was, well, we're going to try and fix where the break is. But they just said, we can't fix more pipes because you just don't have the money. And I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. What kind of pipes are these? Sewer water? Stormwater. Right. Now there are areas, even on the underpass where we got North Street, when you get a really hard rain, that underpass momentarily, but it'll fill up. And you can't go. You can't go through it. Right. We've had the same complaint along Bridge Road. Down at the street behind the high school as well. So I, I mean I, I understand and agree with the issue. I don't know that the proposed zoning changes will add necessarily add to that to, to worsen that effect. It's impermeable. That's just a question of how fast it goes down. Not making. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of the problems is that most of the development would be small projects that don't trigger the stormwater permit right. process. They don't, normally, they still have to address their own on-site yeah. stormwater. Right. So Even if they don't need a stormwater permit. Okay, so theoretically it would improve the situation uh, for places. Or at least not, theoretically, at least not make it worse. Yeah. And part of the issue, of course, is globally, if the home is there on an existing street, it's going to have less impact that they are, are forced to go out to Ward 6 and 7 and build mm -hmm. new roads. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? What are we talking about? their overall amendment not just that amendment or the overall recommendations for so we so what what I would recommend is <clears throat> so if if ordinance can take this up on June 10th they would only close it if they have your recommendation so um, they could close it and then potentially move it to City Council for the June 20th meeting for first reading after the budget reading <laughs> <laughs> so do you need this? Do you need the, the I don't know. <laughs> are we voting only on Owen's amendment or no. are we voting on the whole? You would have no, to close. Right. You would close the discussion, the public hearing on everything, and make a re recommendation on everything. And you could incorporate the proposed 
amendment into your recommendation. And then I would recommend those other modifications about clarifying minimum lot dimensions and um, the garage being not, not living space. Mm -hmm. Steve, I know you did the last one, but it's only fitting. Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is a nice one to well, go out on. Well, there's two. So we're going we're gonna right. to motion to close. We have to motion to close the public hearing. Right. And then we need the motion to recommend the city council propose zoning changes to URA, B, and C with the modifications to section 6A and then also with the changes for seven or more units in URA and B, right. or B and C and then, okay. And All right. The garage right. cannot be converted into language. living space or something. Right. I'll do the, well, start with that. I move that we close the public hearing um, on the changes to URA, B, and C. What Second. if somebody wants to say something? Well, that's, you can, that's why I made the motion. You can deny <laughs> it. Second by John. All in favor? I. have been leaving out the discussion. There's no. No. Yeah. No, we just. No, no. When, when you say. You mean discussion? When it's the moved to second, After, then yes, you say, yes. is there any discussion? Yes. That's all. Okay. You've been skipping that part. Point noted. And the reason I'm saying that is coming up. All right. I move that we recommend to the City Council the proposed zoning changes to URA, URB, and URC with modifications to Section 6A, including the uh, addition for URC and URB for the special permit is being required for multifamily or townhouse projects containing seven or more units, and the change to accessory structures. There's a garage. Garage, uh, garages. Garages. To clarify. Yeah. Garages. And that's the last one. That's the last part. Those two. And yeah, and just adding the minimum lot dimension requirements. Oh, and add the minimum. The, the, those are the wording changes. Yeah. yeah, the minimum lot requirement changes. Sir. Second. Second hand. Discussion. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only thing I'm going to say is well, uh, one point just before we vote on it. This yeah. has been five years yeah. well, of the Sustainability Committee to the ZRC to the Planning Board to public meetings to the City Council back to the Planning Board. It has been a long time, and I think a lot of thought and a lot of energy has gone into it. And it, Carolyn's probably been at more meetings than just about anybody on this whole process. So I think, you know, after five years, it's nice to see. It finally getting a chance to go to City Council. So it's been interesting too. It, it hasn't, to me, it hasn't gone up and down and up and down. After that first wave of discussion review, it, it the discussion narrowed quickly, and then we've been in this thin little area that we've been talking about and talking about and tweaking. But it's been much more tweaking than wholesale changes to what was first uh, initially discussed. Well, and I thought we were almost there when we were reviewing tables, but. Two years ago? No. <laughs> Up until we quit reviewing tables. But I really think we've come a long way with that. Right. I mean, I think that's a, it's a much cleaner presentation. I'm not entirely comfortable with the new zoning changes. And I, don't, I mean, they, not that I'm against change or anything, but they are, some of them are pretty significant changes. Um, but I will go along with it due to the superior skill and wisdom. Mr. Gilson and others, I'll Sorry. probably go along with. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. We're done discussing after five years. All in favor? Here we go. Yes. Should be interesting to see what happens in city council. Yeah. <laughs> still got a while to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have one other item. Mm -hmm. And that's the trees for Lea Kia. Yes. So you all um, got in your email, I can refresh your memory if you need. Um, but an issue that came up that I don't know how it got missed before, or if the utility poles got changed, and I don't know if anybody got a chance to go out to King Street. But those utility lines are right <laughs> there where they were going to plant the trees. And I really would have to agree with the consult, the engineer, to say that those tall trees will not work. We don't want any more U-shaped trees on <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so my recommendation would be to allow the selection of an alternative tree that's a much lower growing, but that might actually be healthy and not chop them hard. So moved. As someone who has had, I don't pear, know, pear, I, yeah, I had a pear tree in front of my house that I, I don't know if sure it was the power company, the cable company, who did it? It was like this? Well, it was a nice triangular tree and they came and cut it and they basically took a notch. <laughs> Not mm -hmm. what it looked like an elf. It's horrible. Mm. So yeah, I'm very happy that we don't have any more shape. I've got an evergreen that goes like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's the way my pear tree looked. Are we leaving it up to them, or have they recommended? What no, tree? I think it was a hawthorn that yeah. I've oh, that's right. Yes, that's six. Right. So they right. had the species, and they would still plant two and a half caliper, but it's going to be a shorter when they plant. Right. And hawthorns are on the list. Yeah. Um, they are not because they're not they're not yeah, full they're not. shade trees. But oh. that's the point is there's, there's nothing in there. There is no point. There's hawthorn yeah. streets all over the world, and I don't even know what a hawthorn looks like. So I should afford. <laughs> disappointed. There's some in Child Corey Park. What? There's some in Child Park. Oh, okay. <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> kind of hoping the applicant would come. There's yeah, only hundreds yeah. of <laughs> trees. <laughs> For your <laughs> bon voyage. I always love talking trees. Well, is that just sort of <laughs> census, or do we have to vote on it? No, I'd like to see a, a vote. Yeah, I need a motion to approve yeah. six hawthorn trees. Oh. So moved. Okay. Second. Second, Ann. All in favor? And I believe that concludes Mr. Stephen Dawson's. <laughs> Did anybody bring the gold watch? For That's right. And I think of being sad that Steve is leaving. I think we should be happy that we were fortunate enough to serve. With oh, oh, thank oh, you. To see. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been a lot of fun. Anyway, I don't miss all of you. Already uh, coping. Watching on TV. We're not going anywhere. Rarely. <laughs> Is that, I really like is that the color of the leaf or is that the <laughs> 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 the We can put it out yeah. in the back room with the World War II float. Should we get an emoji here, Jeremy? So moved. In favor? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>